I can see the salsa dance here. I'd say that the actor has been linked in once, but it's usable in, in many different ways. There are different things you can do to adjust it. Uh, if I go back to the editing layout, and if I look at, go back to find the actor and double click that, if I want to adjust it slightly, I could go back to find the T-pose, it's probably the best idea. Um, and if I wanted to adjust some, some part of it, maybe the head needs tilting, I can deactivate it, so I deselect that active part there, and I can, I can make a slight movement to that. So if his head was looking down too much, I can rotate that up slightly. And then within that, you can actually see, if I focus on that, you can see that these, these blue dots have moved away from the point cloud. Or the blue dots are the point cloud, the white dots are what are represented by our marker set. And if I snap that together, it will give me an option of TR, which is translate and rotate, or rotate only. Um, so I'm just going to move those to a different position. And you'll see that it still works, but its head's tilted a bit further up. That's really useful if the arm's going through the body on your model, um, or you just want to readjust it slightly. Um, and uh, so it may be slightly unnatural at the moment, but we can readjust that back at another time. So that's really bringing us to the end of working with the actor. So again, I'm going to save that. And um, I'm just going to do an import or a merge. They have two things. They have import and merge. I'm going to merge in another file, which is the actual character called the gremlin. And this is actually a physical model. Um, I'm actually bringing in a mesh of the character here. So I'm just going to bring it in. I don't need to take the, bring the take in because there's no information on that. And I'm just going to press merge and bring that in. And you can see I've got this little character down here, which is the gremlin. And so what I want to do is make him move as the actor moves. Uh, so within, I can look through the navigator here, and I can see what I'm looking for is characters. Now sometimes you need to characterize a model, if it's not already characterized, uh, in which you would drag a character from this asset browser onto your model, your skeleton of the model, um, and then you characterize it that way. This one's already characterized, so I can double click on that, and I can look at the character rig settings within that. It has an input type, and that currently it's called control rig, and it's active, so that's working. And what I want to do is turn that into the input from the actor. So I want the actor to drive the motion of this, um, of this gremlin. And as soon as I do that, the gremlin will snap to the movement of the actor. And that will move along and do the dance as, as per the actor and that's really driving the character now. And that's the, that's the process we've got to. So we, we've retargeted, we've used the actor as an intermediary here, and we've set up and defined where the, the point cloud, where the points in the point cloud relate to different parts of the body, and we're using that to retarget it onto this gremlin, um, which is a 3D model. So the actor isn't tangible, you're not able to render it, um, but we're able now, if I save that again, we're able now to send this to Maya. So I can send this as a new scene to Maya, and what they've done since Motion Builder 2013 is to allow you to just send it rather than plot it. What it does, it plots this animation to keyframes on that character, and that should all come across into Maya, and then we should be able to play with that and move that in our scene to where we want it um, and render that as well. So Maya might take a little while to open up, but that should come across, and we should see that in Maya with the keyframes. Now I'm aware that this is recording's gone on for a little while, probably more than 10 minutes, maybe 15 or 20. Um, so I'm going to start winding this down. Um, but I just want to see this in Maya so I can show you that um, and then you'll be in an environment you're familiar with and we're learning how to render from 
and you're able to work with. Last year we looked at, um, I don't know if we did it with your group, but we looked at rendering from Motion Builder. It is possible to render stuff from Motion Builder. So if you're doing a test animation, you may be able to go within Motion Builder, you may be able to tell it to render from within here, and that gives you an option to make an AVI um, and the amount of frames you want to use. So in this instance, I think we've got 1,200 frames there. And it's going to record this onto, I'm going to just put that into the folder that I'm working to. And click on Render Movie. Gives me an option. It's not very many options on the, the codec that I'm using. Um, but I'm just going to do it as a low quality video option there. Um, and you may need to just tell it which, which elements to render as well. So that's the way of just rendering out a test animation from Motion Builder. Now it currently says it's not responding, but I think that's mainly due to the fact that I've just started up Maya at the same time. Um, and that will probably be confusing it. So what's happened now, I've come into Maya and I can see nothing within my scene. So I will have to go back and look at that again. But essentially, I just check the outliner. And there's nothing there. So I re-export that back to Maya. But you can see here, the scene's rendered successfully from Motion Builder. Ah, warning, do not save, don't save. It's now come across. I think I did, a, did that a little bit too early. And I can see I've got the mesh here. Sometimes it's not in the center of your screen. So if you ha can't see it, um, press A on the keyboard and see, make sure you see all of the scene. Um, and look in the, the outliner just to spot where that is. Um, so I'll click on the reference, I can see the bones, uh, the skeleton of that, the gremlin body there. And if I press play, I can see that the model's come in and um, is moving as it, as it should do. So it's all linked together. There's a bit of an issue there with the feet overlapping each other. That may be something that I want to clean up and, and work on in, in Motion Builder and resend it over. But essentially, that's, that's working in quite a neat style. Um, and I'm able to render that directly in here. I'm able to put that into a, um, into a scene and interact with that scene as well. So once it's in Maya, I can just save that one. And I'll be able to use that in the render system later on.